Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the Flex RC Ascent. It's a 93mm micro drone for 2 inch props and actually not quite 2 inch props. This is the version 1 frame and it has a slight flaw in that uh, if you're using the Gemfan 2035 props you have to cut them down because um, actually you see here I've cut these down just a touch, about a millimeter off the edges. Uh, because if you don't, they uh, will hit each other when you uh, do a full throttle punch out. And if you don't want that to happen, then you need to cut it down. There is a version 2 of this frame that's coming out, uh, I've been, I'm hearing, in a week or two. So I would uh, wait till that one comes out. I think uh, these are, were being discounted. I bought, I bought this for like 20 bucks off of the FlexRC site. So I just wanted to uh, check out the frame because I've heard some good things about it and I mostly wanted to use these uh, micro CCD cameras here and I've put the micro arrow in here and it fits perfectly. Uh, the stack is a little bit exposed here because you got the two side plates and uh, the sides here are a little bit exposed but uh, I, I did crash a couple times and didn't have any major issues. I just basically uh, foam taped the receiver and the uh, video transmitter here to the top and it held up in a crash and I also have this little zip tie here that is uh, holding on to the antenna, the video transmitter antenna, so that kind of keeps everything in place anyway. I haven't had any issues there. I have another zip tie here that holds my um, receiver antenna. This is the Flysky FSA8S receiver and also that zip tie is holding on the pigtail for the OSD cable that goes to the uh, Fox Gear Micro Arrow. The uh, power cube here is the, the one I've been using a lot, the uh, Furby F3 fly tower. It's got the 10 amp 4 in 1 ESC plus the Omnibus F3 flight controller. It has this has an OSD. And so I turned off the OSD on the micro arrow and uh, just I'm using the uh, Betaflight OSD on the flight controller. So the motors that I'm using here are the King Kong uh, 1103 7800 KV motors. These are the same ones that are on the uh, King Kong 90 GT and 95 GT. It's a very good motor. Um, running this on 3S, plenty of power, and I have an XT30 connector, obviously. As you probably saw in a previous video, I modded the 95 GT with an XT30 and was flying 3S in this one. This is a very good flyer. Um, the thing I don't really like about that is is the camera. It, it's a pretty decent micro CMOS camera, but uh, in you probably see in some previous videos when you're like some partly cloudy or overcast conditions, the lighting, um, the, the video just doesn't look all that great. So well, kind of going towards more frames like this where I can put in the micro swift or the micro arrow, you have better control um, of the settings and the CCD cameras and you can um, get better video when you have harsh lighting conditions. Okay, so I'll give you some uh, measurements here. So the main plate is about two millimeters and the two side plates are about two millimeters. And this comes in at about 57 and a half grams. This is actually lighter. It's actually lighter than the 95 GT. This one comes in at about 58.8 grams. So even with the heavier CCD camera, it still weighs less overall and it's got uh, full carbon uh, side plates and also bottom plate. Now the video transmitter I'm using here is actually one of those um, hacked all-in-one video um, transmitters that had actually, I used to have a, one of those uh, CMOS cameras attached to it. This is actually the camera from the AR Fun 95, if you remember that one. Uh, for that video, the camera was uh, out of focus and I couldn't uh, focus it, so I ended up reusing this uh, video transmitter. I just cut the camera off and I have it wired uh, like this. So if I did a video on uh, hacking these up, like I should, I think I showed the VM275T. This is similar to that. I just have the uh, one of the video connections on this side over here instead of over here. Uh, but this, you have ground over here, video, and then power on this side. But I have a, I have a video on how to do this in general, and I'll put a card in the corner if you guys want to check that out. Um, yeah, these little tiny all-in-one cameras. If you get if you break the camera or the camera is screwed up for some reason, you can cut that off and just use the video transmitter and then connect it to these CCD cameras, which is pretty nice. 
So there's really not a whole lot to this build. Uh, I just attached the fly tower to the main plate, uh, soldered on my motors, and then attached the two side plates. Uh, there's these two notches here in the main plate where you basically hook up the side plates. Uh, I would recommend hooking the back first and then pulling gently and then hooking the front end. And once you hook, it, once you hook that in, it's basically held in by friction. And then you got these two standoffs here that basically hold it together there, along with the camera itself. Uh, there's a, there's a two, M2 screw right here on both sides. So that can, you just tighten that up to adjust your angle. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the rest is just wiring. Uh, you got your, your FPV system here, your video in and out for your OSD. And then you got your receiver connection. And then I just have all those wires going to the, those components right here and some foam tape. So pretty simple to put that together. And then uh, I have Betaflight 3.1.7 flash down here. And I just flew it with the default PIDs. I didn't change anything. And it flies awesome on that. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll roll you some flight footage and you'll see that this thing flies really well on just default pins. Anyway guys, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I think the more and more I build these two inch micros, the more I'm starting to lean towards these lighter setups and smaller motors with higher KV and on 3S. Uh, so something like this with the 1103 7800 KV motor on 3S or something like maybe an 1103 on 10,000 kV on 2S. Those motors are lighter than the 1104, 1105 motors. And so I'm thinking lighter might be better. They just seem to be more floaty, more responsive. I think they just fly better. This is just, I, I mean, I've built a lot of these and I've flown a lot of these and I, I'm starting to get that sense now that these smaller, lighter setups are going to be better on the 2-inch pops than the bigger, heavier motors. I know that, you know, these 1106 motors are out now, and everyone's going crazy about them. Yeah, they got tons of power, but, you know, you're still dealing with a 2-inch pop. Those motors, you know, four of those motors are going to weigh a lot more than four of these 1103 motors. And I don't know if they necessarily spin the prop that much faster than these smaller motors, so I, I don't know. Um, these are just some thoughts I'm having just from flying the Ascent here and these 1103 motors as well as my experience with the King Kong 95 GT. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, I think that if you're going to build these two inch ones, I think going for a lighter setup is better. At least that's my, uh, what I'm leaning towards right now.